Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to The Walk. Today is Tuesday, November 10th, and yesterday we were talking about the fact that your past is in your past, that you are a new creation. <clears throat> so today we're staying within that idea that we are this new creation, that we're completely different now that we are in Christ, and we need to live that way. So let's pray. God, we thank you for the fact that when we entered into that relationship with you, you completely rebuilt us. You gave us an entirely new identity that we are this new creation, that we have the righteousness of Jesus Christ, something we could never earn on our own. And Lord, we thank you for the fact that we get to be a part of building your kingdom. Help us to boldly walk with confidence as we understand who we are in our relationship with you. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. So as I said today, we are talking about the fact that your past is in your past and now you are this new creation because of your relationship with Christ. <clears throat> so this message is of course, assuming that you've entered into that relationship with Christ. If you've not entered into that relationship with Christ and you're not sure how to go about it, please shoot me a message. I will be glad to help you through those beginning stages and help you start to build your relationship with Christ. So today we're starting in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, and it says, I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. Now this sounds very drastic. You think about the crucifixion that Christ went through. Crucifixion is a very drastic way to die. But Paul is saying that that old me, that me from my past is completely gone to the point where that old me is dead. And now I live in Christ because Christ lives in me. Continuing on in verse 20, it says, the life I now live in the body I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. <clears throat> so he's saying, yeah, I'm still in my body, but I'm living by the faith in the Son of God. That faith is how I'm living my life. The old way that I lived my life is gone. Verse 21, I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness could be gained through the law, Christ died for nothing. So think about how that was in the Old Testament. They had that Old Testament law and they had to follow all these rules and all these rules and they never got it right. They, it was way too many rules for anybody to be able to successfully navigate. And because of that, they did sacrifice after sacrifice after sacrifice to atone for their sin and pay the price for their sin. We do not have to do that because we have that grace of God and Christ was that final sacrifice that paid it all once and done completely. So because of that, we have the righteousness of Jesus Christ and yeah, it is super easy. And a lot of people have trouble accepting it because it is so easy and they feel the gravity of their sin, but it's also so beautiful because it allows you to become this new creation. The next passage we're going to is in John chapter one, and that's one of the gospels. <clears throat> and I wanted to give you a little bit of background to understand who Christ is. And it says in verse one of John one, one, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. So Jesus is eternal. He has been there since the very, very beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made, made. So the very creation, the very fact that the earth exists happened through Jesus Christ. Verse four, in him was life and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Now this is speaking straight to that idea of the God goggles that I'm always talking about. So in him is the fact that you have this new life. And in him is the fact that you can have that light shining on the darkness. You can understand what's happening spiritually because you've got those God goggles on your face and the Lord is revealing those things. Now we're skipping down to verse nine and it says, 
the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. This is Jesus. He was in the world and through the world was, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. So Jesus is coming to the world as a baby. The world is not recognizing him. And it's really ironic because he's the one that created the world. Verse 11, he came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. So he's among the Jewish followers of that Old Testament law, and they're not receiving him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. When we believe in the name of Jesus Christ, we believe that he was the Messiah, is the Messiah, I should say. We believe that he died on the cross to pay the price for our sins. We believe that he rose from the dead, conquering that sin once and for all. We now have the right to be called a child of God. And with that, comes an enormous amount of authority. Verse 13, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. We are God's children and we are born of God. Verse 14, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father full of grace and truth. It's because that word became flesh, because Jesus came to earth and he did that entire ministry, he died on that cross, he rose from the dead, that we are, are able to have the opportunity to be a child of God. And when we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, we become that new creation and we are that child of God. The last passage I have is in Ephesians 4 and we're in verse 17. So I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God of, of, because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity and they are full of greed." So let's think this through. These Ephesians have not left behind that past. They've not left behind those, those sins. They are, um, their lives are darkened. They don't have that light. They're separated from the life of God. And it's because of their, they have hardened their hearts and they're not allowing the Holy Spirit to soften their heart and get that direction. And then we turn to verse 20 and the tone changes. That, however, is not the way of life you learned when you heard about Christ and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that it's in Christ, in Jesus. So he's saying the way these Ephesians are living with these hardened hearts that are separated from God, they're allowing themselves to um, fall into all these old past sins. That is not the way of life that we have been taught. And because of that, we're to live in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. And you're gonna find that as you submit to the Holy Spirit and your relationship with Christ grows, you're gonna get better and better at this. Verse 22, you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. So we were told to put a, let our past be in the past and go full steam ahead pursuing our relationship with Christ. Verse 23, to be made new in the attitude of your minds. We're allowing our minds to be renewed by the Holy Spirit and be able to um, answer those calls and fulfill the things that he is guiding us to do. Verse 24, and to put on the new self created to be like God in true right righteousness and holiness. The very word Christian means Christ-like. We are called to grow in our relationship with Christ. And as we do that, we will become more and more Christ-like. Now, we are never going to be Jesus. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is as you mature in your relationship with Christ, you will gain more and more of his traits and you'll be more and more like him. There's always going to be sin in your life while you're here on this earth. There's no doubt about it, but those sins will change and, 
instead of being sinless, as in being sin-free, you will find that you will sin less often. And that's what sinless means. It means that we're going to be um, more focused on Christ and more obedient to the Holy Spirit as we grow in that relationship. So our past is our past. It's in our past. We are now this new creation. We have the righteousness of Jesus Christ, and that gives us an enormous amount of confidence as we move forward in answering what the Holy Spirit is calling us to do. So walk in that confidence as you go through your day today. As you go into your prayer closet today, check out these verses. It's Galatians 2, 20 and 21, John chapter 1, ver, all, um, all the way through verse 14, 1 to 14, and Ephesians 17 to 24. Give yourself that gut check. Are you walking in that confidence because you know you're a child of God and you know you have the righteousness of Jesus Christ? Have a wonderful day. God bless and keep walking the walk.